Okay, as we continue our discussion with arrays, there's a few more topics we need to discuss before we move on. And with that, one of those is called dynamic arrays. Uh, sometimes you're loading an array. It could be based upon data you're collecting. It could be based upon some things coming from a database that you want to put in memory in an array. And ba or it might be based upon, I don't know, taking information from a text file and moving it in, like what we were talking about when we do, was doing some uh, string manipulation techniques. Now, there could be all kinds of reasons for arrays, and there could be all kinds of reasons we have no idea how big to make an array originally. And this is where dynamic arrays come into play. So for instance, uh, in our cookie counter example, say we went through our user and our user and we asked them, how many classrooms will, you know, will ever be part of this uh, uh, cookie counter type of, uh, uh, of fundraiser or whatever? And they might say, well, this year we had seven and next year we might have 10 or we might build another branch uh, of classrooms and you know, it could get to 100 or 200 classrooms. Well, what do we do? Uh, do we wait for that and come back and update our programs? Usually you don't want to do that. You don't want to get into your program. So usually what we used to do is we would go in and try to figure out uh, how big the array could potentially get. And so, you know, what we could do is very simply, like in our cookie counter piece, instead of making our array only seven, uh, you know, elements long, like our, for our, our, our dwarf type classrooms um, or 10 for our original problem, we can make it 100 you know, and then only use the first 10 of them. But the problem with that would be is that the first 10 would be used and then the next, the, ne the 90 elements would just be empty. And all we'd be doing is just wasting space, wasting memory, which potentially slows down your computer and it's just because it's this very inefficient way of programming. If every programmer did that, we have a bunch of wasted, allocated memory that's never being used. And thus, yes, our computers would slow down. There's no doubt about it, even with today's amount of memory that we have. So once again, our goal here is, you know, in, in this program is not only to teach you how to do these things, but also how to do these things you know, to maximize the resources. That's why we learned about scope. That's why we learned about data types uh, and those types of things. And so it actually, uh, you know, goes uh, hand in hand with arrays in this case. But there's many times you do know exactly how many you want, and there, but there's going to be times that we don't, okay? And so dynamic arrays allows us to uh, dynamically allocate memory while the program is running, meaning we can increase the size of the array as the program is running. That sounds so simple. Maybe, I don't know, that sounds simple to you, but it's, you know, just a quick statement there. It's really quite powerful, and it was one of the things that the C language was able to do back when it was first um, uh, developed, back in the uh, 60s and 70s. It can allocate memory dynamically. It's, it's actually called a memory allocation, dynamic memory allocation. If you take the C class here at Cincinnati State, we'll actually go through this quite a bit. But, and it takes a little bit more work in C to actually make it happen. And you'll actually get into trying to understand how the memory works when you get into the C program. It's not that complicated in VB. VB does things a lot more simple, um, even though, uh, you know, sometimes it's doing a lot of things in the background for you, you don't even realize. That's where C comes into play. Highly recommend everybody take C. With that said, uh, you know, what do we need to do? Well, what we need to do is this. We're going to declare uh, the array as normal with no bounds. So sort of like how we uh, did the, uh, the classrooms with no bounds to it and they may pre-populate it. It's gonna be the same concept. You're gonna declare a variable as an array. There'd be no bounds to it. In this case, it'll basically be an array that has no memory allocated to it whatsoever. Then every time we want to add something to the array, what we will do is utilize this new statement that we're going to teach you and we'll show you called redim. Okay, a redim will redeclare the array based upon the new boundaries that you would give it. So if, something, if you want to add the very first uh, element to it, you would redeclare it with zero uh, you know, boundaries, meaning zero would be the, uh, the number we would put in the boundaries, meaning it would be one element. Okay, and then the next time you go through, you would increase that to one, to two, to three, to four. And then it makes no difference how high it goes. And every time you run the program, <coughs> excuse me, based upon the data that will be coming in or the amount of data coming in, it will grow dynamically. I also use the word scalable for people who have taken our IT 111 class. The word scalable comes up quite a bit. It can grow on its own. 
And in a sense, that's what we're doing here. We're allowing the, the, the array to grow on its own based upon, based upon the amount of data that we're going to be loading into it, which could be different for every situation that, uh, that the, the program or how the program runs. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're going to declare array as normal. Each time we add it to the array, we're going to use redim, where you'll define the bounds of the array. And each time you use redim, it will increase the size of the array based upon your new boundaries. Again, very simple, yet very, very powerful. All right? Let's show you an example here on how to use this. Again, once you kind of do this a couple times, you'll get, you'll get used to it. So I created this little program that's going to take in a bunch of salaries, okay? So in this case, uh, it's going to take in salaries for employees. I made it pretty simple here. I'm actually going to start it up here, okay? And it's going to add salaries. And so we're going to add salary in here. This is going to be for employee one and for employee two, for employee three, for employee four, and so on. Pretty cool, right? So what I'm doing is I'm putting these salaries into an array. And uh, I want to put them into an array because I might want to change them later. I might want to do things. Once I'm done entering the salaries, I'm going to hit negative one and actually come out of it. And at this point in time, I can actually show the average of all the salaries. So just by clicking on a button, it shows the average for all the salaries I actually entered. Here's something cool here. I can go back to it and keep adding more salaries for another set of, for more employees as I kind of do it. Okay? Again, just an example. You'll take this example and try to apply it to your problems, but you kind of get the idea. Negative ones I, I use to get out of the... Uh, out of the loop there uh, for uh, inputs. So now I have several uh, uh, employees in here, and I'm going to show the average salary. Cool? All right. Now you probably said, well, Bob, couldn't I just have accumulated every time they added to it? <laughs> Could have, but maybe we wanted to do something with it. Maybe we wanted the ability to actually go show something here. Maybe I see that I actually entered uh, employee three incorrectly. What would I have done, uh, you know, uh, to fix that? Um, in, in, in this case. So my, my, my average here is $7,400. So let's go fix employee four, uh, employee three. So I'm going to update the salary, enter the employee number. So I want three, and that's really supposed to be $4,000. Okay. And now I show my, uh, my average and it's completely different. And I actually fix my data, not only in my array, but also on my list box. Pretty slick. All right, let's go see how we actually did this, okay? So adding salaries, uh, in this case here, I declared my array, as I told you, with no bounds. There it is right there, my salaries array, okay? I'm going to come in here. I'm going to collect my salaries. I, so I, 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 the reason I kind of did this, I'll show you here in a little bit, so I can actually add more to that list without having to do the, uh, the, um, the headings again. So I create a little Boolean true-false in this case. So it started as true, and as soon as I added my headings for the first time, I, I turned them off, okay? I came down here, and I basically uh, entering the data. Now look what we did here. We had no bounds. And so going back, and you can kind of look at this code a little bit more closely, but I had an input box getting the salary. If I put negative one in, I finished everything. I basically said, let's get out of the loop, okay? But if everything's good and it meets the criteria of, of the validation, meaning it has to be numeric and it has to be greater than zero, I did this thing called redim. See, redim DBL salaries INT index. INT index, when we first started, was declared up here. And, of course, when you declare an integer, it, the default is zero. So it's going to put zero right here and redim that array. That will now have one element in it, which allows me to move my salary, my very first one, to that first element of the array. If I loop back up and add another one to it, and as you see right here, I increment that index by one. You see me doing that? Now my index is two. Oh, I'm sorry, it's now one. It goes up, I come back through, get another salary. I redim this now with one in here. So one in here now allows me for two elements, and I can add it to that element. INT index would be one, and so on. So now I have two things in here, and so on and so on. And I can do this as many times as I like, redeclare this array. So I don't set it as a static array, basically saying it's 10 uh, elements long or whatever. I basically say, I'll add elements as we go. 
again, extremely powerful from a programming point of view. This word preserve right here is something that you need to have in your read deal. You don't have to have it. It's really up to what you're doing. But what preserve does says, if I added data to my array and I'm going to redeclare my array, if you want me to keep all the data I put in there before, you've got to have this keyword called preserve. Uh, that's part of the redeem, uh, redeem clause. Okay. If you don't have it there, it will actually erase everything and start all over again. It'll almost kind of clear out the array and start all over again. That's what with a blank array. You may want that. You never know. But if you want to, if data has been added to the array and you're adding more data to it, the word preserve will keep it there. Okay, so this little statement right here allows me to have a dynamic array. So I have to do this, increment my index, and every time I go through this, I'm adding one more element to it and then basically populating that element. Pretty cool? That's dynamic programming, dynamic allocation of memory uh, for an array. And that's how you do it. Very, very simple. Something to keep in mind. Okay. Uh, let's see, I calculated my average salary. It was no big deal. I basically just went through and uh, accumulated my totals and, and then uh, divided the salaries by the length. The length will hold based upon how big we actually make the array every time it goes through. Remember, every time we add one to it, the length will increase too. So this program is completely dynamic. If I put in two salaries or I put in a, a, a thousand salaries, it will work every time. And it will allocate the memory for me that I need. All right? That's what's pretty slick about it in, in this case here, okay? And I'll try to get it started one more time here. Here we go. And here, you know, again, add salaries, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Every time I'm doing this, it is increasing the size of the array. And for each one of my employees, okay? Look how that list works. It actually gives you a... A scroll. I don't think you've, know, you've ever seen that before. And so, no matter what's in there, all this is now an array, and of course, it's also in my list box to show it to you. And my average will work accordingly. Very dynamic. And I made this such that I can just keep adding more to it and adding more to the array. All right. Okay, real quick, you may want to look at this uh, code I wrote uh, to update the salary. It's a little bit uh, interesting, yet it's, it's showing the power also of the list box. So I want to give you one second here to look at this. So what I did here was uh, I actually in, in, I, I wanted the ability to update um, any employee's uh, salary. For whatever reason, I wanted to do that for this particular program. And so if you saw it, it asked for the employee number, which I gave it. If the employee number was between uh, zero uh, all the way up uh, one, it should say, one all the way up to the length of it, it would basically match the employee number. Okay. And again, I used the length uh, minus one as, as a means of making sure I had um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the employee's numbers and so on. And correct. Okay. If everything is good, I ask for a new updated salary. Look at these little pieces here. These are these little methods that are part of the uh, list box. We've been using dot add, but I can remove a line at a list box. So what I did is got a little bit creative using logic. I figured out the employee number and I added two to it. Why did I add two? Because guess what? Uh, guess what that list box is? It's an array of strings. Yes, people, there's rays everywhere. And with this right here, I'm pointing at the index of that array of strings in that list box. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Why did I add two? Well, I found the employee. I added two more to it because I had these things in here. And so I had zero, one, two, and then it would start on the employee numbers. So I added two more to the index for this situation. Okay. And then what I did is I, ins I removed whatever line was there and inserted a brand new line that had the new salary in it. Then what I did was I updated the array, okay, the employee number minus one, because employee number is two, they're probably in the one location and the one in the zero location, right, based upon uh, indexes. And I moved that in there. Isn't that slick? Look at that code. These are a couple of cool things you can do with your list box. You can remove, you can insert. I don't do these very often, but it really allowed me to play around with this and have some fun with it and kind of show you why I wanted to keep the array because if I just did a, if I just added data and accumulated, I couldn't do what I just said I was going to do there. 
And so, let's give you one more example here. If I did this.